what's up you guys it's Allison welcome back to the tiny herd it's been a minute I know it's been almost a year since I've posted a video and a lot of you guys have been asking where I am and if I'm coming back and here I am so I just wanted to share today some updates I'm not gonna go into huge detail talk me talking um, but I'm just gonna give a little bit of some updates um, do kind of like a meet my pets video and introduce you guys to all of the pets um, Catch up on the pets that you guys know and introduce you to the new little babes So let's just go ahead and jump right into this video. So really quick first if you are new to my channel I know I am just now coming back, but I am planning to make new pet related videos on my guinea pigs and bunnies Every week so my goal is gonna be Friday uploads So if you don't want to miss a video make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so that you don't miss any of my uploads but let's go ahead and introduce you guys to all of these pets and give you a couple of updates so just really quick I'm just gonna explain where I've been and why I wasn't uploading um, honestly I work a very busy job like for example this past week I worked 54 hours so I just have a very intense job um, I also was running another business for a while just like a blog and another YouTube channel and that was taking all of my time and my focus so I just couldn't keep up with two channels um, I've kind of reevaluated where things are with um, my job and with my other business and YouTube and all of that and I've decided that <laughs> you see Mikey I've decided that um, I really want to take all those skills that I learned from blogging and doing YouTube with my other channel and apply them to the tiny herd mostly because this is what I you know am really passionate about um, I really enjoyed what I did on my other channel and um, I'm not gonna completely give it up, but this is really what I think I want to focus on and what I'm really going to enjoy um, long term. So that's why I'm coming back. I do have a website. It is thetinyherd.com. It will be linked down below in the description box and I'm working on updating that, adding new content. There's going to be regular weekly posts on there as well as the posts of my weekly videos. So my new schedule is going to be, um, well, it's my old schedule, but I'm going to be trying to post a new video every Friday. I will say I'm not going to put pressure on myself if work is too busy that is obviously my first priority but I would like to do a weekly upload for you guys on pet care or just pet fun so I will let you guys know if anything with that changes but that is my plan for now so that is really the the long story short of why I wasn't uploading and why I am coming back to upload at this point um there's nothing really else to share to do with that so I'm just gonna go ahead and introduce you guys to all of these little pets. So first up are the girl guinea pigs. So there are three female guinea pigs that live in this big DIY cage that we have here. Um, I will tell you a little bit about each one of them. So over in the corner, that is Callie. Um, she is a long-haired, like, Sheltie breed guinea pig. Um, I got her from Petco when she was a couple months old before I knew that you could adopt guinea pigs and, you know, kind of like rescue or adopt or rehome. Um, so her and her sister Belle both live in here and they are both from Petco. She is my only smooth haired, long haired guinea pig. Um, and that is really her entire story. She doesn't have any, you know, backstory or anything. She is just about six years old at this point um so she is a senior piggy this girl over here eating hay is lily um she is also six years old all three of the girls in this cage are six um she and her i think baby or sister um i had adopted from the humane society they had been found in a box of 13 abandoned guinea pigs and they were really dehydrated had mites all of that stuff so the humane society you know rehabilitated them and i adopted her and her sister luna luna sadly passed away in 2018 after having you know emergency space surgery all this stuff going on we think she had some unknown complications from that a couple months later and she didn't make it but we have miss lily here how are you she wants a snack many things in the way how are you all right 
This is Belle, who I mentioned a minute ago. She is a short-haired, um, I think an American short-haired guinea pig. I got her with Callie from Petco, like I said. Um, she is six as well, and she is honestly my most senior pig, I would say. She's the same age as the other two, but she definitely shows her age. She has some issues with arthritis, I think, in her back end, and we have to do little bum baths and belly cleanings for her more often because she has a little bit more trouble keeping herself clean now. But that is all that's really going on with these three. No major medical issues at any point, and that is really just their backstories. So, yeah, these are the three original piglets that I adopted back in 2015. And just to quickly mention, if you guys are interested in learning about this cage at all, I do have a video and a blog post about it that I will link down below. All right, next up we have Mr. Georgie, who doesn't really want to come out and be on camera. But he is, we don't actually know how old he is, but I would suspect he's probably three-ish. Um, but he is an unfixed male guinea pig. He lives in this four by two with a two by two, well, two, yeah, two-ish by two loft. He is a lone piggy, so he was adopted with his brother, Freddie, and Freddie sadly passed away about a year ago in October, um, October 2019, and we have toyed with the idea of getting him a friend several times, but honestly, I know, like, I normally would say every guinea pig needs a friend, but he really, really loves being by himself. I know, like, it, you can tell with your own pets, um, you know what's best for your own pets. He was a pretty happy vocal pig when he was with Freddy, but I don't know if it was just the dynamic between them, but he is the happiest little pig now. He does zoomies, he runs up and down his ramp all the time, he weeks for food, he always comes out to see what we're doing, and he didn't do a lot of that stuff before when he had a friend. So at this point, we are letting him be a single piggy. Um, we'll see in the future. I have thought several times about uh, trying to bond him with a baby male guinea pig so that might be something that we try in the future but for now he's really happy as a single pig so we're gonna when he tells us that he would like a friend then we'll get him a friend but he just he really came out of his shell when he was a lone piggy so we're just gonna let him be for now but that is really the story on him we don't know I, I got him from the humane society um we don't know a story on them but i suspect that he and freddie had been in a classroom because they don't like if you reach over into the cage to pick them up, but they want to see, he wants to see what's going on all the time. Um, he's always coming up to the bars to see what's going on, he'll talk to you. So I think he was probably in a, in a classroom environment. Next up, we have some new guinea pigs that have never been shown on my channel before. So this cage holds Johnny and June. So here's Johnny. They've never seen the camera before, so they're probably... Johnny's very timid anyway, so we'll see how he does. But as you can see, he is a Texel guinea pig. He has the long hair with the curls, the curly whiskers. So that is Johnny there. And that is June that just took off. See her little face. So this is June Bug. We call her June Bug. Um, she is also... She's a Texel guinea pig as well. Um, they're not super sure about the camera, so I'm going to back up a little bit, and hopefully you get to see them come out a little bit more. So I adopted them from the Humane Society as well, but this was a situation that I just couldn't turn it down. Um, so I don't know the backstory on them at all. Uh, I suspect somebody adopted them from a breeder and then didn't ended up not wanting them because my guess is they're only about a year old. They were very small when I got them, and they've gotten much bigger, which leads me to believe that they were babies. So I think they're about a year old at this point. We got them in January of 2020. I couldn't pass them up. I have always, always wanted Texel guinea pigs. And when they came through the Humane Society, somebody tagged me in the Facebook post about them and I just couldn't say no. So we went and got them. So of course, <laughs> Johnny is a boy, June is a girl. So Johnny actually is neutered. So he cannot, you know, have babies. They won't have babies. And I will go ahead and tell you guys a little bit about what's been going on with them. I am going to do a full video on ovarian cysts and guinea pigs, but 
I'll tell you a brief overview of what's gone on with Junebug since we got her in January. So, uh, I would say in the end of July, she started losing hair across her whole belly and sides. I wish you could see her because you can kind of tell where she had lost hair. But I was like, okay, does she have ovarian cysts? Does she have mites? Um, turns out she had both. So she had picked up a respiratory infection and that had caused her to have like mites also. So we treated the mites in both of them, treated her respiratory infection, got her all, you know, healthy. But throughout all those vet trips, we also had done x-rays a couple times and the vet did say she has evidence of ovarian cysts. We think we should go ahead and spay her. So we did that in the beginning of September. We did spay her. And during her spay surgery, um, the vet actually found a mass in her uterus and a major infection. So there's nothing that like that I can say is what caused it. Um, sometimes it happens with how they're bred. Sometimes uh, a lot of guinea pigs are just, you know, genetically predisposed to these things. And ovarian cysts are actually very, very, very common in female guinea pigs. So, again, I will do a whole video on that in the future, but long story short, we did spay her. We had a biopsy done on the mass that they found. We treated her with antibiotics for the infection. The biopsy came back that she just has a benign tumor, so that is not going, it's not cancerous or anything, and her infection is gone, cleared up, and her surgery incision is completely, completely healed. So, she is fully good to go, all of that done, with a little pig in the last three or four months. So she's doing great now. Johnny is doing great. He is the cutest little thing. One thing I will say about him, again, I don't know their backstory. He doesn't, like his vocal cords are not right because he doesn't have a voice really. Like he'll, he has sad little like raspy squeaks, like he's trying, but something about his vocal cords, like he's perfectly healthy. We've had him health checked. I mentioned it to her and she was like, he doesn't have a respiratory infection or anything like that. So he is perfectly healthy. Just something about his vocal cords just doesn't work totally correctly. So he has little raspy weak weeks, but he is just an adorable little pig. I'm so excited that we got them. Um, I just love having them and having babies. They just, you know, popcorn and zoomy and stuff. So it's been a lot of fun to have them. So that puts us up to six guinea pigs. Now I will go introduce you to the bunnies. All of the guinea pigs are weaking and I don't know why. <laughs> Anyways, this is Mikey or Mike. Um, I call him all different names, but he's trying to take a nap right now. He is, I think, three years old now. We got them in 2018, um, and I think he was about a year old. So I think he's about three now. Um, I got him from the Humane Society as well, along with his friend that he lives with. Um, so I have Mike and Andy. They are a pair of bonded bunnies, of course. They are 100% uh, free roam rabbits. They're litter box trained. They do have their home base in this room, but they are free to go throughout the whole rest of the first floor of our house. So he is, um, I don't know what breed he is, some kind of Rex, um, but he is a meat rabbit breed. So him and his friend Andy were both found abandoned on like a gravel road. I'm thinking that they came from a farm that no longer wanted them because he, uh, like I said, he is a meat rabbit breed. Um, so people raise them, you know, for food. But he lives his happy life with us here now. I will mention, um, he does have a head tilt. People mention that all the time. I do know he has a head tilt. Um, it is permanent. It's not going to go away. He had, him and Andy had really, really, really bad ear mites when they were found. Um, to the point that they thought they might not survive. So that was when they were babies. They both do have permanent ear damage, both internally, and Andy does have some external ear damage as well. Mikey does have a head tilt. He got an ear infection at one point um, two years ago now, and it caused him a permanent head tilt. It does not affect his life at all. He still runs around, binks, eats his hay. Like, he lives a normal bunny life, same as Andy. Um, the only thing is he doesn't really jump up into high places anymore, and he does have his head turned a little bit to the side. But other than that, he lives a normal bunny life. 
He is a mama's bun. If I'm out of town or something, he pouts and he likes to hog all of the attention. But that is the story on Mr. Mike. I had to come out here to find Mr. Andy, but this is Andy. He is a, I think, German short, or er, German Angora rabbit, so he's long haired. He, again, was adopted with Mikey from the Humane Society and they were found abandoned on a gravel road. That's why I think that they came from a farm because a lot of people keep Angora rabbits for their fur because they um, use it to make yarn, which people use for like, you know, making sweaters and stuff. So people will keep them and um, shear their fur, kind of like a sheep, and use it and sell it. You can see a little bit, I don't know if you can tell. Oh, here he comes. He does have some mats on him. So I don't know if it's him as a rabbit or if it's like just breeding, um, but no matter what he does with his fur, it gets matted. So there's no way that he could ever keep his own fur in a, you know, acceptable state. Like, I'm sure that he would just be a big ball of pain uh, if he was left to his own devices because he would just have mats everywhere. He, whenever he sheds, which is right now, he is shedding, we give him regular haircuts. Um, he's gonna have those mats that you can see cut off later today. We do use clippers on him to get down underneath the mats and get it all off and keep him, you know, happy and pain and tangle free. So just be aware if you think you want a long haired rabbit, he requires constant haircuts, constant maintenance, constant brushing. Keep that in mind. If you uh, are thinking you want an Angora rabbit, there's like, I'm telling you, nothing, nothing we can do to keep him from getting mats. We just have to cut them off. Like he will be perfect in the morning or perfect in the evening and then by the next morning he will have two or three mats on him so if we left his fur long all the time he would just be a mess so we keep his fur pretty short um it's a little bit long right now which is why he does have a couple mats and we are i was trying to keep it long because it's starting to get cold but he needs a haircut he needs to be you know clipped and he's going to have that done later today or, well, later today he is going to have it done and then he has it done usually about once a week at this point. So keep that in mind if you want a long-haired rabbit. But I have loved having him. He is so smart. Bunnies are so much smarter than people give them credit for. He is super smart. He's the one that will come out into the kitchen. We have to make sure we bunny-proof for him because he chews cords. He's almost too smart for his own good sometimes. But I have loved having him. I love having the bunnies. They're such good friends too. They're very, very strongly bonded. So that is the story on the bun buns. All right, you guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed getting to see a little glimpse and backstory onto each of my pets. I tried not to ramble too much, but that is all six of the guinea pigs and the two bunnies. We do also have a dog, but he kind of just hangs out in our basement. He's an old guy. Uh, he is 12 or 13. He was an old farm dog and he just, you know, lives his happy retirement life um, down in our basement and that sounds bad. We have a fully finished basement um, with a living room and all that stuff. So he has a nice area to live down there and we have a walkout basement for him so he can go in and out um, as he needs to get fresh air, you know, and exercise. So that is all of the animals that we have at this point. I hope you guys enjoyed getting to meet them or, you know, get an update on them and meet the new Johnny and June little babes. So thank you guys so much for watching. Again, please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell if you don't wanna miss an upload. I will be trying my best to post a new video every Friday. I know I have a video coming um, this coming Friday. I've already filmed it for you guys. So I hope you guys enjoy the videos that I have planned. I'm excited to get back into it. Again, all relevant links will be down in the description box, but I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.